Welcome back to another exciting tutorial here at Coder Foundry. I'm Bobby Davis, the founder of Coder Foundry. And I was working on a project this week and I thought I would show you a solution that I came up with for horizontal cards. Now horizontal cards, and you're probably very familiar with card layouts, are a way to display information in a very tidy and easy way for people to consume information. It's very popular on the web right now. But one of the problems that I ran into was a thing called a horizontal card. And since I use Bootstrap a lot, um, they do have a ability to create horizontal cards, but they don't work as good as you would like. And so when I was building a site, I noticed what I had to do to do it. And through my research and looking at various solutions around the internet, it doesn't look like there's one really clean way to do this. So I thought I would show you what I, what I did. So what I'm gonna do is show you what we're gonna build. And uh, we're gonna use pure HTML, CSS, and just a tad, one line of JavaScript here to do this, but mostly just CSS. Um, bootstrap and HTML. And so these are um, what I call horizontal cards and horizontal cards has an image to the left here, your content area to the right, and then a footer that only extends into the content area. So you can see here I have this, these cards here that lay out right. The other thing that I ran into was if you're using something in bootstrap like card decks, or those kind of grouping mechanisms, they aren't responsive. And so like you really can't use them because most people will look at your website on something other than, you know, a, you know, a 4K monitor like we're looking at here. So if you, this is also very responsive and you can see here as I just squeeze my browser down, everything still fits and looks nice, okay? I am using some media queries, queries um, media queries here to make this a little bit happen, but not too much. It's pretty easy to do. One other thing that you can do is in your developer tools inside of Chrome, you also have this really handy thing here where you can investigate um, different types of devices like an iPad Pro. And if I put it in here, you can see that even um, on these different devices, this kind of scales pretty nicely, it looks really cool. And even on something like an iPhone X, um, it's still doing the same thing, looking um, pretty sweet if you don't ask, if you don't say so myself. Um, so these are what, what we're going to build. And so let's get started. And we're going to use VS Code to do that. So let's just kill this. And let me show you kind of what, we, what we're going to build. All right. So let's go over to VS Code. And I already have a, a, a project set up here and I've got my covers in here that I'm going to use. Um, and if you've looked uh, real closely, um, if you look at the back of my set here, I um, have this on my wall because I think this is the coolest cover of all time in, in Spider-Man lore. Um, I would, if you're Spider-Man fans, please leave me a comment and tell me which cover you like the best. Um, but this is, um, some of them are really, really cool, I think, and especially in this time period in the 70s and the 80s, had the best art. But you may be grew up in the 90s and you may have a cover that you like the best. Um, but um, anyway, let's get into building it. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we're just going to create an index HTML file and a site CSS. Okay. And so these are the two files that we're going to use here, and they're both empty right now. And so let's get started kind of building this out. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a, a get bootstrap in here. And you do that with um, right here. And this gives me my classic bootstrap template. All right. And so in here, I'm going to start laying out my page here. And so the first thing that I'm going to set up is my layout. Okay. And I've looked at like using the standard layouts like container fluid and container. And it works well with those if you're using Bootstrap. But I went ahead and made my own. Okay. Just because I, for this particular page, I wanted to just increase the padding. So <laughs> no real good reason. But you can use, um, you can do it however you want. So all of these are going to be custom styles that I'm going to build out. So I'm going to have a, um, a div class layout. And then inside of here, I'm going to have an H3 tag. And this is going to be the title. And I'm going to give it a class 2. 
and we will go over all of these classes that I'm putting together here inside the CSS part of this demo. And so I'm just going to say all time great Spidey covers. All right, and then uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to lay out just a simple row. So I'm going to use Bootstrap for this class equals row. If you don't know anything about this, it's that rows and columns are the grid facilities inside of Bootstrap is pretty cool. And this is how you do it, just make a row. And then inside of that, I'm going to make a column. And what I'm going to do here is my site that I'm putting out is going to have two cards across the for every row. And so what I'm going to do is break these at the medium breakpoint so that they stack. But when it's big enough, they'll they'll put them side by side all right so i've got a um a column here that's going to break um a column width of six as you know in bootstrap it is column width or is 12 it has a grids of 12 and i'm going to use half the page here by setting it to six and i'm going to break on the medium uh, when the sites go down to a medium it'll start stacking so inside that i'm going to make my image and I created a class called image. And inside that, I'm going to put an image tag. And I'm going to give it the class. And this is going to be called image fluid. And this is another bootstrap um, type class that allows it to be very responsive as it goes up and down the widths of the browser. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and set the, the original source here. Um, and I'm going to pick amazing 50 and that's just issue number 50. That's when Peter Parker lays down his costume. All right. And so from there, I'm going to go ahead and close that out. We'll just do that for now. Um, and let's see what's next. All right. So now we need to just do our content. And so our content's going to go right here and I call the class content and then I'm setting a bootstrap style here of our class of horizontal 100. I want it to fill up the screen as much as it can and take up all available space and let's see here. I want to do this too. Let me put another class in here, another div here and I'm going to call this poster card. So poster card is another class that we're going to set and it's going to control the entire look of everything. And it's going to be H 100 and it's going to go around our content and our image. So I messed up a little bit, but we'll recover. All right. So right now we have our poster view. Okay. And then we have a poster card. And then inside that, we're going to have an image. And then inside that, we're going to have our content. All right. So inside this content, um, we're going to put a title in here. And that title, and we'll say amazing. Spider-Man. And number 50. That's correct. So that's my title and it has a class called title. And then I'm going to do a simple P tag here. And this is going to hold my the overview of the comic and what I called this class was overview. I'm going to cut and paste this. So I got these, all these overviews over here. So Peter becomes frustrated with his life and decides to throw away his Spider-Man outfit and quit becoming Spider-Man. Okay. That's kind of cool. Now, um, the next, the last thing that we need to do, is we're going to create our footer. And I think this is what my technique sets us apart from what you can get to by default inside of um, Bootstrap is that uh, 
the footer covers 75 percent of the card not the whole card and it lines up really nicely at variable heights and so we're going to make all these fixed heights which i think is cool um i'm putting a, a an a tag in here which means this would link out to maybe a detail page or something like that but that's for later we're going to leave it empty and then i'm giving this a nav button class that i created and we'll just type in more info okay and so that is in fact the html side of this so what i'm going to do is i want to go ahead and kind of um let's create another card here so i'm going to copy this row And now I have two cards. I just make sure I did that right. I squeeze these up to make sure that um, we're looking good here. All right, and I want to change out the kind of which ones we want to show here. We can go Amazing 39 or Amazing 67 which is that Mysterio poster that you see in my office quite a bit. It's really, really cool. And um, let's change this. 67. And let's get the Mysterio thing here. Okay, so now if we've done this right, we have no styles. Let's see what it looks like. And then we'll start adding in our styles. So that's our HTML. So let's look, let's check it out here. Bring it over. And you can see I've got these giant posters here and I've got our title and our things here. So it's not looking like anything yet, but we haven't styled it yet. So let's, um, let's close that out. You can see how cool it is. That's cool. Um, and so um, let's just keep going. So now let's look at our style sheets that we got to do just to kind of make this work, okay? And we'll be done a quick order here. All right, so let's start styling it up here. So let's go to our style. Let's close this down. And what I'm going to do in this style here is I'm going to start from top to bottom. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a body tag. And I'm just going to cut and paste this. I found a really cool gradient. Actually, with these gradient creators. And I just made one that's the blue background. And I'm just going to set that up. This has nothing to do with the cards per se. In case you're new to CSS, this is just so I can get that really cool blue background. Um, the other thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to have to I'll go ahead and add our style sheet in here. So let's just do that real quick so that we have a reference to it. And I'm also going to bring in another style sheet too so that I can um, have a custom font. Right. So um, I've got a, um, I use a W type kit and in here I've downloaded a font uh, that gives me that comic style that you see in the thing and I'll use that here. I'll push this out on GitHub so that you can also use the font if you want. Um, but anyway, um, so we've got it, we've got our style sheet linked in and I'm linking into my CSS for my font. Um, so let's go back to our styles here and let's save it all up. So now if we look at this and we see it come up, you can see now we've got that nice kind of blue kind of gradient going on here. And that's all that's doing. I just wanted to lay that out for you so that we know, kind of know what's going on here. So that's pretty simple. All right, so let's keep going. And let's go. All right. So the next thing we want to do is set our layout. Layout. All right. And the thing that I that's kind of nice about um, VS Code, if you can see here, when I over look, use layout, if you get confused with should I put a dot or put a pound sign in front of it, this shows you kind of like 
this is sending a class on any element. And if it has this layout class, then it'll take on these styles. Um, but my layout is going to set my width to 100% and width, not when widows. I don't know what that's about. And then um, I'm going to set some padding and some margin. Okay. And this is only the only reason I'm doing this is because I wanted a padding of 35 pixels. That's it. And I set a padding right. I think the default inside of Bootstrap is 15. If you do something like a fluid layout, and then if you do a just a regular a container, then it's kind of it's a lot centered up and it has a lot more spacing. But I wanted to use most of the page, All right? But I wanted a little more room to breathe, so I created my own. All right, and then I'm going to set the margin that left to auto. margin right the same thing all right so that's that and let's see here um, let's just look at it real quick and you can see here he's got a little bit of a space in here so not nothing nothing major there okay so we'll leave that going on and so let's keep on going so let's go style all right so the next thing we want to do is lay out our poster card all right so dot poster card and i've tried to do these not necessarily in alphabetical order but in the order that they're rendered so we kind of know what's going on and so what we're going to do is we're going to position these cards relative to its container and um, I'm going to set a background color. And this is our overall card that our image and our content will lay on. So um, I'm going to set the color to pound, DD, which is just a light gray. Um, this, you can vary this however you want. You can do whatever you want here. Not a whole lot of um, issues here. Um, set a display and inline black so that um, all right and then um, what I want to do is I'm gonna set a little border around the outside of this box um, again this is these are styles that you can you can mess around with and so I'm gonna set it two pixels solid and then I'm gonna set it to that light gray again um, we could set it to a dark gray if you want to show up more, however you want to do it. And then there is going to be a margin on the bottom that I set to negative 0.5 EMs. Now, for the most part, I use EMs everywhere, so that's more it's it's better controllable across um, different um, display widths. And then um, finally, I've got a shadow in here, and I put a shadow on the back of it. Just going to cut and paste this in and all of this is doing is setting the shadow around our box and setting a color for that shadow you can control this color to whatever you want um, depending on your background um, certain grays or yellows or something like that may look better depending on your design okay but i'm using gray against that blue and it looks pretty good if i change that background to something else like a like a darker color it may not look as good but um all of these can be adjusted. All right. So now we have a poster card. All right. And so if we look at that, this is what we're styling is this little class right here. And this is the, the um, image, the content and the footer. And so that's poster card. Now we're also going to um, style up this poster view. Probably should have did that one first, but um, let's get to that. And so we can style that up and then we can kind of look at it and see kind of where we're at. So I'm going to create one called poster view and um, not a whole lot going on here. Just some padding around the whole poster itself so that when you stack these um, that they stack and they have space between them when they're stacked and left and right. 
so that when they're put in a grid, they kind of like, you can kind of make sure they have even space in between them. That's all that's going to do. So, um, pretty cool. So let me save this. And we, now we can look at kind of where we're at. Okay, still ginormous, but you can see now we've got that grid or that like color around it. And we've got this white or this gray um, drop shadow. And our text is in here somewhere. Okay. So we need to set our text so we can see what's going on here. All right. So we haven't done that yet. So we'll do that in just right now. Okay. So we're getting there looking kind of cool. All right. So um, the next thing that we want to do is set the actual title for um, the poster view. And, um, and so how I did this was I just said H3 dot poster view. And the reason I did it this way is that um, in case I'm using H3s in a design somewhere else, that's not on these cards. Um, this would style it just based on, if you can see here, if the H3 class, if the H3 tag has the class poster view, and that's what this does. Okay. Um, and this is where I'm going to bring in my font styles. And this is from Adobe Type Kit. And so, like, um, I'm using the Biff Bam Boom. And if it can't find it, it would default to a sans serif. And then I set the font size, the font weight, the font style to normal. Okay. And then the next thing I want to do is I'm going to set the stroke on the outside. So I'm going to bring that in here and just show you kind of what that is. And this will stroke the outside of the font itself with one pixel and black. And this color and this size, you can change this and mess with this all you want. You can change the font weight. Um, and you also could bring in your own fonts if this is if you're not doing a comic based site and you want to do some other type of font. That's how you would do it. And then finally, we're going to make it yellow. And so um, this is just styling that. And so I'm going to put some padding around this. Um, I left this in here. It's 0, .0. Um, but there may be some reasons why you want more control over it. So I just kind of left it in there. So if we look at what we got now I can bring this over and you can see now like we're starting to see our thing come together and it is got this kind of like good cool yellow font the new font and it's it's got a stroke around it. it's kind of neat it's not very big though but we'll handle that in a second all right so the next thing we want to do is let's work on this image let's get this looking quite like we did and make it a horizontal image card because it's still stacked. Okay. And this is the magic to doing it. So in my class, I set up an image and then I use something called float that floats it left. All right. Kind of cool. And then I'm going to go ahead and set a background color for this. Um, I don't think this is quite entirely necessary, but, um, in case something doesn't load or whatever, yeah, have a good fallback. All right, and it's just zero, comma zero, comma zero, and that O's it's zero, comma zero, comma zero. All right, and that's black. You could set this whatever color you want, and I'm going to set the width to this to 25 percent, which means that I'm going to take up one quarter of the poster card. All right, and the other 75 percent obviously will be our content, and that's how we're getting it to look kind of cool. All right, and then I'm going to do some other styling around this. I am going to set up a transition and show you kind of what happens. All right, all right. So we'll do that in just a second. We'll cover that in a second. But let's look at what this did. And you can see if I come over and look at it, you can see now it's starting to stack because uh, I got it. But I've also got my um, poster back in here all right still not quite not quite done yet but you can see here i got i need to change my text color but my my posters are now kind of sized right and that's what that left is doing kind of cool all right and um so let's just keep going so let's work on that transition and i'll show you how that works 
So um, what else I can do is I can do an image and then I can use hover. And that means that when you hover over it, do this. And because I've got this transition set up, this hover will take 0.3 seconds to, to do. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the opacity of it, of the image to 0.7. Okay. Which means that it's going to, um, kind of glow a little bit, but kind of get a little more transparent. And then I'm going to change the cursor to pointer. So it looks like it's selectable, which it's going to be here in a second. And then I'm going to change my box shadow, a text shadow, and then I'm going to use something else called a blend mode here. Okay. And so what, what happens here is I've got a box shadow that's going to go around the poster itself or the cover, and it's going to be yellow. Okay. And then um, I've got a text shadow and it's going to go around and that's yellow. And then, then I darken it with this blend mode. If you haven't played with these, they're kind of neat. Um, if you're familiar with Photoshop, these are like Photoshop kind of blend modes that are now inside of CSS. It's kind of cool. All right. And so I'll show you what that does. Um, if we refresh our page here. You can see that now it's it glows and it's got this yellow glow on it and it's got this kind of effect on it like it's been selected. It's kind of neat. You can play with this a lot to get the effect that you want. I'm just showing you how you would kind of do it. So that's all that's doing. Okay, so now let's work on our content side. So we can get our content looking nice. So again, I'm gonna put a style in here for content and I'm gonna float the content left. And because the way it's in the um, laid out in the, uh, the HTML, this will float left till it hits the image. That's kind of cool. Its width is going to be 75%. All right. Now that's kind of cool. And so we're going to display and I'm going to call it a box. Okay. Because I'm going to do something unique here and um they had to really research to get to work and i'm going to show you what it does here in a second so what i wanted to do is inside this content based on the size i wanted to truncate the text so on like a really small like iphone 7 then the text would kind of um, overfill and i just want it to be truncated all right and so i'm using something called line clamp and um and in adjacent to fixed height or max width or max height excuse me um this will clamp the line to five the max height is four and a half and then it's hidden and because this line clamp here is it'll put a ellipsis at the end of the text showing that hey you know what there's some more stuff here and i'm going to show you that in a second all right but let's keep going just a little bit all right, and then um, let's do content. I've got a content H4 in case I was using an H4 in there, which I'm really not, but I um, just want to show you that if you put a tag inside a content, you could um, use different HTML tags and make sure it's only referenced inside an element that has the class of content so that you can kind of style them independently by other things. Um, inside my title, I also have my title of the comic that I want to put in here. And um, basically what I'm doing here, I'm setting the font size to 0.7 EM, which is um, a smaller line, a smaller font. And then I bolded it, and then it's black. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use media queries here to um, raise the font as we go up. Now, one of the techniques that I'm using here is I'm changing my style sheet. And this is what's called mobile first design, which means that everything that I'm doing here would work on like an iPhone or your mobile device. Okay. And then I'm going to make adjustments as the screen gets larger. Okay. I design for mobile first and then make adjustments as it gets bigger. So when we first show you this, it's going to be a little bit weird because it's going to be kind of small, but 
um, that's okay because we're going to override that with a media query. Now, the next thing I want to do is inside something, my P tag, I want to um, change my font sizes and do some work in there. Okay. So I want it to um, wrap on words because I don't know what type of contents can be pushed in here. So I want to word wrap and break on the word. And then I'm going to set the color. And you can set this whatever you want. And I've also set my font size. Now, one of the things that I did here is my title size and my font size on the resolutions as it goes up are the same. And all I'm doing is setting the weight to bold so it stands out. Okay. And then my line height is just a little bit bigger than the font size itself so that it has a little bit room to breathe. And that's about what I did there. Okay. Uh, almost done here. And so um, the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and set up my footer. And that was um, a lot of stuff going on here, but I'm going to paste these in. Okay. Go over them real quick. My footer is a dark gray. And then I positioned it absolutely. And then I set the margin to the bottom to zero. And that's what forces my footer inside the, um, the overview area to, to the bottom. And that's what it does. It. This is one of the things that I was trying to do um, that didn't naturally occur inside the bootstrap cards. Okay. Then I set the width a little bit outside the bounds of 75.5 so that it could get beyond the edge there. And then um, the left, I still have it 25% so that it doesn't overwrite anything on the image side. All right. And so then I also set um, a lot of margin settings here. Okay. And when I was dialing this in, some of them using, some of them not. Um, this is entirely up to you. I just want to show you kind of like if you like it spaced out a little more on the bottom, you can change the right and the bottom and the top padding. And then the margin bottom is so that it lines up at the bottom. And then the right is so that um, it kind of displays nicely. And so these are all settings that you can um, adjust if you want. I just put them in there so you can know what to do. And then finally, um, I've got my nav button that I want to bring in. And so inside there, I've got my nav button. And so that's going to be, again, I'm using that font family, uh, Biff Bamboom, font 100. Um, it's yellow and it's normal. But I also wanted to make it look kind of cool when you hovered over it. So I applied a stroke on the hover. And I just did that with the same thing that I was doing for the image, the same trick there, using the hover. Um, and then I colored it yellow. And now my stroke is one pixel black. There is a lot of things for text that you can use the hover for. You could underline it. Um, you can just do a lot of things. Um, I'm using it pretty simple to do that. So that is the basis of the whole thing here. So let's just check it out and we'll see what it looks like. And hopefully we look good. And you can see now um, it's, it's, it's kind of hovering. We got our more info and amazing Spider-Man. It's kind of tight in here. Um, we can work on that a little bit, but we can also um, change this based on the size here. Right here, I'm running this monitor at 1080. And so that's 1080 by 1920. So we could probably increase the font size here if we wanted to. Um, so if we look at our developer tools here, and we change this to, um, say, uh, an iPad. You can see now it's kind of looking kind of cool. All right, so we've got some stuff going on in here. And if we look at our phone, it looks pretty cool. It's a little bit tight right here. We can, we can work on that a little bit. Definitely can work on that. Um, so um, let's work on that. And then let's get it going to where it's the size is right. Let me show you how these media careers will work. All right. All right. So the way media queries work is you have to put them in the correct order. Okay. And I got these media queries from Bootstrap itself. And I'm putting them all in here, but I'm not using them all. 
in case you run into an issue and you need something at 576 pixels, you would put your style overrides in here, okay? And um, so I'm gonna put all of the media queries in here. Let me show you how this works. If you haven't done this before, it can be a little bit time consuming. And a lot of times with Bootstrap, you're, you, know, you don't need to do this all the time, so you don't need to have every site that has these, but sometimes it's necessary in the case of this, I felt like it was to do it. And so I'm overriding some of these queries and I'll go through them in a second here. So let me get them all in here. And then I'm gonna do one more special thing that I think is kind of cool. All right, so um, if you see here, what I'm doing is um, it starts from smaller to medium to large to extra large, okay? And so 1920 or 1080 and 4K monitors and above would run inside of this media query. And you don't need to duplicate your style sheet. You just need to do the things that you want to override. And then it will take the same style and use all of the, um, the style and then just override it with the settings in here. And so you can see here, I'm setting my font size to 1 EM on the overview and I made the light line height a little bit better. Um, and I'm using a font size of 1 EM on the footer. So it's a little bit bigger here. All right. So let's save it and I'll show you kind of how that works. All right. So hopefully I got it running here. Let me just get it running. And see, now it's a lot bigger. And so now you can kind of see what's going on here. But as you squeeze it down, the font sizes are adjusting. Kind of cool, right? All right. Kind of neat. And you can see now our font is bigger for our title. And so now you have total control over this. And this works really nice. I mean, it's, it's I spent a little time trying to dial it in. And, and you maybe can dial it in a little bit more. Um, I'm not happy with this right here, so we could probably set something here in our poster card. All right, um, but let's let's do one more thing here. Um, I think that's cool. Is let's write a little JavaScript. All right, and what I want to do is when I pop on that poster, I want to show a modal that holds the poster itself, and I'm going to just put in some code in here at the top of my layout. Now, the one thing about modals is you should probably put them as high as you can in your markup if you're using them. And a modal is something that's invisible most of the time until you, you invoke it. And so this won't be seen until I invoke it. All right. And I've got some um, classes in here or IDs that I put in here called comic title and um, comic image. All right. So I'm going to be setting these with JavaScript and then I'm going to make it up here. Kind of cool. All right. This is straight out of the bootstrap things. Um, the only thing you'll need to notice here is that I've, you do have to name it with poster modal and that's how we're going to, um, get with it or, um, access it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the bottom. I'm going to write a simple script. Okay. And I'm going to use JavaScript to do this. And type equals JavaScript. Um, text JavaScript. Okay. And so this is a really simple script. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a function and I'm going to call it show poster. And we're going to um, show uh, a zoomed in portion of this comic. Okay. And so it's not small. And so I'm going to say comic. I'm just going to make up some variables here. And the one I want to change for the model every time is the title and the image. And the image. All right. And pretty simple to do. And I'm going to use jQuery here. You can use vanilla JavaScript if you want. I'm going to use jQuery. And the way you do that is to access a an element in the HTML page, you just put a pound sign in front of it and comic title. And these are these IDs I showed you. And to change the, 
the comic title, we hit the text attribute and we pass it the comic title there or parameter that's coming in. And then I also want to change the source of the image itself. Okay. And so again, we hit it through its ID selector and we're calling it comic image IMG. And what we do here is we say attribute because we're not changing the inner text of it or the inner HTML. We're changing the inner text. We're changing an attribute and that attribute is called source. And it's value that I want is the comic image that's being passed in. And then finally, all I want to do now is I want to pop this mobile. And this is how you do that with jQuery. And so I called it postal, poster, postal, poster modal. And, um, and you just call the modal function and because it's in bootstrap it knows what that is and hit show okay and so now I've got this little function and so what I need to do here is I need to call it on the click event of our image here and I want to do it right here okay and I'm gonna just push it in here so I'm not gonna type all this in I'll just going a little long here. So um, what I can do is I'm going to create an on clicked event and you'll see real quick. I'll explain it to you. So um, on click show poster, call that JavaScript function, amazing Spider-Man 50. That's my title. And this is the image I want you to set the source into. So, and then I want to do it on the second one as well. I'll just copy it and push it over here and let's go whoops i did that on the wrong spot guys okay let me put this in the right spot so this is the image where we had amazing um but when i click on this I want to click on this image. All right. Pretty cool. And then when I click on the next one, I want to show the other poster. And if I did that right, should in fact work. I'm going to show you what we did here. Hopefully it works. Okay. This is popping up, but um, it's got a broken image. So let's just see what we did wrong here. I know what we did wrong. We got to put the right path to it. So like, um, this has images. So like, um, we just need to pass this in here. Let me do it on the other one. And let's change this to 67. We got the wrong one in here. So if we go back and we run this, we should be good to go. So if I click on this, now I've got this really cool modal pop-up, kind of neat. Um, fades in and out real nicely. And that's kind of it, man. I mean, like I, I can set the, uh, the width here, but that is um, horizontal cards. Um, I'll post the code on GitHub. Um, please leave a comment and subscribe if you like this. Um, I've got more tutorials coming. But I hope this helps. I hope this helps you on your design project. Good luck and keep coding.